Uh, Sorry, how I much mean, do you know about the the Blizzard situation? Uh, I've been catching snippets of it on uh, well, a weird source for this uh, Kotaku, considering that they're like you know very, 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 very far to the left, and they are very, very, very much against Activision Blizzard. And uh, just I've just been following up on certain things where there's a lot of workplace harassment. There was like a Cosby suite that the guys made. I know, I know that one. Is that what they called it? Yeah, the cos they called it the Cosby Suite. That is insanely sad. Yeah, they had a picture it, it, of Bill Cosby in the suite. It wasn't just called the Cosby Suite. They put a picture of Cosby above the bed. Oh my god! And didn't he just get out? Hey, hey, hey. Like, didn't yeah. he just get out from jail? Thanks for joining by, uh, Super Mario. Yes, uh, Cosby did just get out of jail. I couldn't remember if it was him or OJ that got off. Uh, well, both. OJ got, OJ got released, like, a couple years ago. <laughs> he did? Yeah, he's on Twitter now. The juice is loose. Oh, God. What are we, what are we, what is wrong with America? <laughs> The American justice system? Well, he went to jail for, like, threatening people over, like, uh, memorabilia that was being stolen in Vegas or something like that. And he, like, threatened people for autograph. And I think that's where, like, alright, just throw his ass in jail. We, we, we'll get him this time. Yeah. We gotcha. We gotcha. So apparently, uh, Activision Blizzard just had like a an investor call. I'm sure that went very, very, very well. <laughs> yeah, just a couple days ago they had it. Um, that oh, that, that was how they ended up. Following. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Making uh, J. Allen Brack, the president of Blizzard, uh, resigned. Basically, it just happened like yes, two days ago. He was he, yeah, he's the sacrificial lamb. Yep, the scapegoat. Um, but you, you know that's that's what comes with that territory. You're the president, uh, you know, as Aspen Gold said, is it, even if it's not his fault, it was his responsibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't. Know. No, but I, you know, I think Blizzard was kind of in need of a big shakeup. Mm -hmm. It. it, it it could have been a, you know, it should have been something far less bad. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'd see where you're going with that one. Allegations of sexual harassment and, you know, boy, <laughs> you're talking like borderline human, human rights violations and all this yeah. stuff. <laughs> borderline human rights violations. What a workplace. <laughs> yeah, like, it, it, people have... Like, pe people legitimately have PTSD from, like, working there. Uh, Baltimore regime stretch, by the way, so I'm stretching. Yeah, I just didn't. Stretch my finger. Yep. Oh, yeah. Thanks for, th thanks for following, Baltimore. Welcome to the Bear Cave. <laughs> Poor Baltimore. That's, that, uh, so... It is, it is... You could end up seeing some... Good come out at least for the people that have stuck with the company. I mean, the people that are now co-leading Blizzard, the position's not too big for their britches anymore. There was, there's been a long time where uh, Blizzard kind of fell into the trap where seniority tra uh, trumped ability. And there are people from the old guard that was, the old guard was always the people that were in charge. Even though they started as a very small gaming studio that just focused on one thing and became this huge thing, and one doesn't necessarily mean that you can do the other. Like running a company that's as big as Blizzard now, it is a completely different thing than this, you know running it when they were making games like The Lost Vikings. Then when they were making Diablo two, or even just the the basic starting team of, of Warcraft. Uh, so, so. Yeah, that's why I dropped the Lost Vikings. I'm pretty sure that was one of their first games. Yeah. 
I, th I think. Don't, don't quote me on that. Yeah, you guys, you guys are 100% the Blizzard fans of this stream, of this outfit, of this radio rodeo. But uh, for me and everything like that, my um, dabblings in Blizzard stem from like Warcraft Three. Like, oh, check out this uh, strategy game. Okay, cool. And then um, dabbling a little bit into uh, Diablo myself a little bit, and that's per watching other people play Starcraft. That's pretty much it. Oh well, yeah, that, uh, I kind of. Uh, I mean, I. I hope they get their act together because I we're we're, we're fans young. of Blizzard, but we're not fans of modern Blizzard. Yeah, <laughs> and that was before the sexual harassment allegations. Yeah, which I, comes I, from old Blizzard, so it's a it's a very weird thing to be a Blizzard fan right now. Um, mm -hmm. It's been around for so long that, that they say these issues, and and part of that is the small company to big company thing. There's, there's things you can that are as simple as inside jokes when you have a company of or, or studio of 15 people that are all uh, you know good friends with each other and you can joke about like if you're like if you work with your family there's things you can do and say in a workplace that you can't do if, it, if it's not your family members mm-hmm it, and it outgrew that to the point where they were still doing that crap and then it was like well that's kind of inappropriate you can't just walk around walk up and put your arm around this lady that's working for you and that's that's at the shallow end of that that pool of allegations that's the sh that's the that's that that's the tame stuff yeah exactly yeah it, it just yeah. I got seduced to come back to Warcraft, so, you know, you might and gone and you might get something where the where the uh, the people now they're taking over that you know they they were chosen because they're very successful at that level. That you know, maybe you'll actually see good changes happen in terms of even what they're putting out because. You know, they're this massive company, and everything they look out look put looks like they put out looks like it was made by you know an indie company. Like it, if you would think they have budget constraints. Yeah, exactly. No, at this point it's like Bobby is it Kodak or Kodak? I only like ever read his name as the CEO of the the whole the shebang. Uh, it's like every time like they do something like this, it's like oh Kodak or Kodak needs a new uh, yacht. Well, he makes that company lots of money. Bobby ain't going anywhere. No. Uh, that, I mean, that's that's kind of that's what happens when you're a publicly traded company. Your your investors are king. Your shareholders are king. After all, what they say: money talks and bullshit walks. You'll so they're gonna make a lot of, the, of a lot of the like most celebrated games of the last ten years are, are from private companies because they need to make, put out a good game. They they don't have investors to impress. It's not about the numbers. Look at our financial report. We were able to squeeze this much money out of our mobile division. Uh, we got it. You're welcome. Look at this. The only exception, really, to that rule is, um, like, direct Microsoft and Sony Studios. Well, more Microsoft than Sony, but... Because they have so many avenues of revenue, they're, the shares of Microsoft aren't reliant upon Xbox games doing well. Yeah, they can just fuck up a couple and still be good. <laughs> yeah. Their whole goal is they want to make a good enough game that it, it sells the console and all that. So they, they focus on it. And Sony to a somewhat similar extent. Because um, they have other things. Sony Entertainment and all the movies and shit. 
Walkman. <laughs> Walkman. They're still, still getting that, they're still getting that half that Spider Man cash. <laughs> Yogman. Uh the Xperia. The Xperia phones, they still make those? I don't think they do. Oh god, they were awful. Well, except for the Xperia Play, that was awesome if they could have supported it. That was a really, really nice uh, emulator machine that I had as a phone. I was like, oh, you're telling me I can use my Sony Xperia phone as a like a portable like retro gaming device That's with a slide-out controller? Let's uh, guess what? You can use your portable uh, mobile phone. A and I never do it because it sucks. Mm -hmm. Look, I, I will sit here and defend, and defend Windows mobile phones for the day I die. Didn't get a shot. I know. I love that. I love those phones. I, I wish they made more. Just too late to the party. They just didn't. They didn't have the the app. The apps they needed to make it work. Nope. But here, Apple is charging you nine hundred dollars an app, <laughs> and people still like, no, nope, I gotta get it. But it's Apple. It's Apple. It's Apple. Gotta get my Apple TV and my Apple Arcade. Although I, I kind of like the idea of Apple. Go ahead, Tang. I thought you remember that. There was an old ad um, where they asked this guy, like, why didn't you pick an Android? And he goes, no, nah, I'm too creative for an Android. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and that's really, that's kind of like the big, uh, that's, that's, that's like the big hoodwink by Apple. Is there this more or less luxury brand and tech. Luxury brand tech, pretty much the creative standard. Like anybody that has to edit video edit on a Mac, it's like, oh yeah, the Mac's got less system resources and everything like that that can be used. It's, yeah, it's, it's that's more... not as true anymore. But that was definitely time. They because they, they put themselves out there as like, oh, we're the creative company. If you're a creator, yep. you need yep. an Apple. Yeah, exactly. Which was complete bullshit. Yeah, so many video editors would just carry around their MacBooks. Like, oh yeah, I got this. Let me go. Just let me just put up a Final Cut, or let me just bring up Adobe Premiere or Final Cut or Avid. It was Avid back in the day, especially. But they were like bringing up their MacBooks and be like, oh yeah, look at me. I'm all fancy, fancy. Look at that. Oh, I'm gonna do edit on my Adobe Audition. Yeah, it's the equivalent of of writing the manuscript for your novel in a Starbucks. Look at me. Uh, I guess what? I got that rough draft ready. I had a business meeting at a Starbucks the other day. That was fun. Oh yeah, <laughs> kind of. Was it a, was it a a meeting between you and Mister uh, John Stall? Uh, John Stall. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, business meeting. Uh, I was in between jobs. I had to take a poop. <laughs> <laughs> That's ironically how I met a very famous baseball player from this area. I met him on the John. Okay, you guys please, share? please tell this story right now. Okay, so everybody everybody knows who Cal Ripken is, but but do people know his uh, brother Bill? And uh, that's something that I'm just asking for. Second yep, I'm at most of us do. Yes, that are from, you know, the Baltimore area. from 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 the area. But I'm talking about like people abroad in general. But Cal Ripken has a brother named Bill Ripken who has is just so off the wall and outlandish. He like he has like oh uh, Bill Ripken. Remember that one time he dedicated his bat to his son Fuckface? Because he actually wrote Buckface on his bat. <laughs> so I was um I was actually interning for uh, Cal's company, Ripken Baseball. And I'm in the bathroom and uh, the you know the bathroom was pretty much full, so I had to do a number one in a stall. <laughs> which uh, is like, you know, not really good public bathroom etiquette, but it's like I, I had no choice, I had to go. And then all of a sudden all of a sudden, this this guy walks in, and then he's just like outside. He's outside the he's outside the stall. And he's like, "All right, let's hurry up there, fella." I'm like, uh, "Okay." <laughs> and then and then okay. literally, I open I, I open up the door, flush I open up the door, flush it, and he's like, "How's it going, Bill Ripkin? Nice to meet you, but I got business to take care of." And he's got a newspaper. I'm like, "Okay, see you, Bill." And that was the first time I met Bill Ripkin. Was on Perfect. the shitter. Well, before the shitter. He wasn't on the shitter yet. He was getting ready to be on the shitter. We were, we were, we, we were transitioning shitters. I met Billy Ripkin when he uh, he took a shit on my pee.
Oh god, that just reminds me of the one of those episodes of A Thousand Ways to Die where a fucking squirrel crawls up the guy's butt and uh, eats the insides, and they're just like, uh, cause of death, critter in the shitter. It's disgusting. I'm gonna say awkward silence on that one. I'm like, I thought you guys would find that a little funnier. I mean, I, I do, but it's just gross. It just reminds me of Richard Gere from, like, 20 years ago. That... How rumors can destroy a fucking career. This was before cancel culture. This was before social media. It's just as soon as they find out that Richard Gere, when a little hoax goes around, that he's a gerbler. <laughs> He goes from Pretty Woman and acting in just about every movie with Julia Roberts to... I just want you to know that was a perfect noun. Yeah, He's a gerbler. gerbler. <laughs> He's a fucking gerbler. What is it? He goes... Now... Is that a super gerbler? gerbler? What it, the, the, ger the gerbler. <laughs> or you tend man. to put gerblers up your ass. You're a gerbler. What do you mean? Ladies and gentlemen. A gerbler. The gerbler. Maybe Max Caster can make a rap about that, right, Tang? I hope. I mean, um, you'll be you'll be hearing from Richard Gore, Gears lawyers. <laughs> yeah. He would be. But I mean, it's just like Richard Gear goes from like this this A-list royalty, like Hollywood royalty, down to like I guess like B or C list actor. And it was just like, this guy was on top. He was in, like, like critically acclaimed movies with Julia Roberts. And then all of a sudden, someone just says he's a gerbler on the internet. It goes viral, and it's like, wait a minute, now his career's over because everyone thinks he's a gerbler when he really isn't. It's, uh, uh, the rest of the stream is just going to be racing in the word gerbler. Gerbler. <laughs> he was I, at one point. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He was fucking Hollywood. He was royalty. And then that comes out, and you don't hear from him anymore. Gold gearhead. Well, a lot of times when that happens is they go through a period where they're really popular, they make a ton of money, and then they just are done. They go behind the camera, or they just have different investments, and they're kind of done dealing with the life of a movie star. And they just want to be like, you know, Mr. Spike Lee and just uh, hang out at Lakers games and just make a movie every once every 20 years. Yeah, I mean, I, really, we have to realize as a society that we made Toby Maguire rich. We're assholes. <laughs> that guy is a piece of trash. But he's worth like 75 mil. I, I, I can't I can't sit here and deny the fact that we're assholes. I might have helped him. <laughs> I mean everybody who did and saw that damn movie you know, helped it. We got excited. Like it was. It was awesome back in the day. I mean, come on! It was. I mean, you you can't deny the first Spider-Man movie was fucking amazing. Well, to, to be fair, the second one was like the gold standard for superhero movies until very recently. The third one. Yes. Well, see, and the, then the third one happened. Was the bar was so low. It was. Like, he didn't Iron Man, do much. And after Iron Man and Avengers 1, like, most of the people were still putting Spider-Man 2 up there. I don't think that got crushed until, like, Endgame. And I'm saying that with, uh, the second Batman that came out, or whatever the one with Joker was. The, 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 the Dark Knight. Yeah, that one. People still cream over that movie, too. Why so serious? It was great, but come on. The third one sucked. Oh, well, yeah. that That's pretty much you can say that about the Spider-Man movies. The third one sucked. Well, the third one was a, it was a special hey, kind of suck. You need to for Grace out of this. It wasn't his fault. They you mean the guy, that actually, the, the guy that actually should have played Peter Parker? Yes. Yeah, the, the, the perfect fit for Peter Parker. Peter <laughs> Parker. That's your fault, Sam Raimi. 
but it's just like you know the enduring thing from the the Spider-Man movies that that that, that now just hold the test of time is literally J. Jonah Jameson giving me pictures of Spider-Man. Damn it, give me pictures of Spider-Man. Well, I don't know if you and, saw the recent the last Spider-Man, but he's technically canon in the MCU now. There we go. That's fantastic. <laughs> but between that and also Boom Saws Radio. Well, that's more that has to do with Macho. Well, the, the, but the thing is, though, is that there are people that don't know that that's Macho Man Randy Savage. They just they just go, oh, it's Bonesaw. Yeah, most people There's don't an entire... know who Macho Man Randy Savage is. They just go by Bonesaw McGraw. Oh, it's Bonesaw. There's a whole generation of people that just think that it's just, oh, it's Bonesaw McGraw from Spider-Man. I'm like, yeah, it was, but he before that, he was the Macho Man Randy Savage. No, there was no before that. He was still Macho Man. He, st- he still was Macho Man. Elizabeth, will you marry me? You do that awfully well. <laughs> one of my first wrestling, one of my one of my first wrestling memories was literally watching that SummerSlam when it was it was the match made in heaven and the match made in hell where it was um fucking uh you know Hogan and everybody against like Sergeant Slaughter and General Adnan and you know the Iron Sheik. <laughs> And then they said the match made in heaven is just literally they they, they they televised Macho Man and Miss Elizabeth's wedding. And then Jake the Snake Roberts interrupted it. Dude, people Thanks. cried. People, you can see the old videos, people legitimately crying when Macho Man proposed. Yeah. And I, I just remember also, I just remember like Roddy Piper on uh, commentary. He's like, do it! Say yes! Do it! And then she goes, oh yeah! Woo! It's like all crazy and the, the crowd just pops. Morning, Umphy. Good morning, buddy. I, th- I think one of my earliest wrestling moments was uh, watching it. Because I can only watch like the Saturday ones are on like Fox or NBC or something. I don't remember what channel they were on, but I could only catch like the Saturday morning like hour show they had or whatever it was. And I distinctly remember Superstars. Yeah, that's it. Mr. Perfect had this segment like every week and he, one I distinctly remember was him throwing a football to himself like the whole length of a football stadium and I was at the time I was like how did he do that you know because I was like Trickery. six and that's all I can remember mm-hmm. weird I know but I don't know why that's in my brain you could say his expectations were shattered. <laughs> He's now the king of dinosaurs. Mr. Perfect has died and been reincarnated as the king of dinosaurs. The fucking... <laughs>